fair value for Bitcoin is around 55K. So I think we drift upwards toward that, that level. But then the punters are gonna come and we're already up 100%. So that leaves a 5X from here. When I talked to Mark Yusko back in February, he told me that the end of the crypto bear market was just around the corner. I was skeptical, but he was actually right. A new crypto rally has finally kicked off with BlackRock filing an application for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Yusko thinks this is just the beginning of a parabolic move that will bring Bitcoin to new all-time highs in anticipation of the halving set to take place in April 2024. In this interview, I talked with Mark about his crypto price outlook for the next months and the main catalysts we should look for. I'm Giovanni. On this show, we challenge the ideas that shape the world of crypto. In each episode, we assess a crypto narrative, a macroeconomic outlook, or a potential disruptive technology. Only the most solid ideas will make it to the other side. So, Mark, last time we talked, I think back in February, um, you were saying that this year we, we were going to see the start of the crypto summer. So, this uh, uh, renewed uh, Bitcoin uh, crypto bull market. Uh, what do you think? Has the crypto summer started? And do you think that the application by BlackRock for a Bitcoin for a spot Bitcoin ETF uh, triggered that the start of the crypto summer? Well, we ended crypto spring uh, in June, I think. I think it was kind of you know last June fifteenth where we had the 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 bottom. Then we had another interim bottom after the FTX debacle, and then you know this year. Uh, June fifteenth, I think, to me was was the trigger. Now people look at it and say, "Oh, but we had this big rally from December of last year into into June. So isn't that isn't that the the rally?" Well, not that to me, that's just the beginning. Kind of that that got us back to even over the previous year, and now I, I you know I look at at where we're headed in a in a crypto summer. Now, what does crypto summer mean? Well, it's it's where the attention of the markets kind of shifts toward this halving event. In this period between now and the halving, I think we drift upward towards fair value. What's fair value? I will argue based on a Metcalf's Law model, fair value for Bitcoin is around 55K. So I think we drift upwards toward that, that level. But then the punters are going to come, right? If we go from 30 to 55, everybody's going to say, oh, we're going to the moon again. People are going to throw out the multi hundred thousand dollar targets, and we probably will have a speculative blow off top sometime in 2024 that leads to the next downturn and the next crypto winner. So it's a long answer. Okay, that's interesting. So you expect the next downturn to be already next year? Well, 2025. So the downturn, so the way I think about it, and it's just my way of thinking about it. The four-year cycle tends to run June to June-ish. So, you know, we saw crypto spring June 22 to June 23. June 23 to kind of April, May 24 uh, will be crypto summer. Then we'll get the blow-off top kind of from May of next year to, to, to kind of May, April, May of, of the following year. And then, then we start the next downturn sometime leverage will come back. My 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 one thought though on that Giovanni is that the leverage in this cycle probably won't be as bad as the previous two, meaning there won't be as much leverage available and therefore the highs probably won't be as high. You know, if you think about the two cycles ago we went up 40 fold. That's a big move. Then last cycle we went up 20 fold. This cycle, I think, probably more like tenfold, and we're already up a hundred percent. So that leaves a five x from here. So could I see a price in the one fifty range? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Okay, that. yeah, that's pretty realistic uh, perspective on uh, the future outlook on the Bitcoin price. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, the latest uh, uh, big news uh, of crypto, which is. Uh, the uh, application by BlackRock to uh, for a Bitcoin for a spot oh, yeah. Bitcoin ETF, which apparently triggered the beginning of this crypto summer. I've said for for a long time, actually for over a year, 
that no one else was going to get approved for the ETF. But, you know, the Winklevoss twins and ARCA and 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 uh, DCG, all these guys were making the application I'm like they're going to get stamp rejected. I said, the only person I saw that, that had a shot was was BlackRock. He said, why? I'm like, well, because they're part of the group. I mean, they're part of the incumbents. And so, shockingly, uh, they released their application. Now, it coincidentally, with the beginning of what I deem crypto summer, BlackRock shows up and says, hey, we want to do an ETF. I think it will be approved. I don't know when, right? But but my guess is, you know, sometime in Q3 or early Q4. I think that is going to change some of the dynamics of this crypto bull market. And the reason is um, just supply and demand, right? There's there's a whole bunch of people who aren't going to sell at any price, and demand is going to rise if a bit if a spot ETF is approved, and it's to me the antithesis of what happened in November of 21 when they approved the futures ETF. And from that point, prices just went down. Well, well, why is that? If there was a futures ETF approved, why didn't that increase the price for a Bitcoin? Well, because futures ETFs do the opposite. They actually allow banks and other large speculators to short the price of the asset because you can create a paper asset out of thin air. And you've seen it in the gold markets, you've seen it in the oil markets, you've seen it in the in the commodities markets. Now we've got the onset of what could be not just tens of billions, but potentially hundreds of billions of demand from people who trust BlackRock. Right. There are a lot of institutions, they just trust Larry and, and BlackRock, and, and they will buy this asset. And so I just want to follow up on that because um, I was talking not long ago with uh, an ETF uh, analyst at Bloomberg. His name is uh, Eric uh, Balchunas. He said that... Uh, yes, love Eric. Yeah, he said that basically, according to his estimates, this, uh, this spot ETF has around 51... He, he puts the odds that... 51% getting approved, 49 not getting approved. So he twi he he's like tilting more towards a positive outcome. What is uh, your estimate of the odds? Look, I, I mean, I love Eric. I think he's a great guy. Uh, I think he's being way conservative. BlackRock has uh, applied for 576 ETFs. They've gotten 575 approved. They've only lost once. I'd say the odds are way higher than 51.49. Look, I, I think it's a done deal. I, I think it's been a done deal for years. They've just been waiting for the right time. Um, I I actually think it's going to be approved. But, you know, I never say 100% because, you know, things can happen. But I, I'd say 51 is very conservative. But that's not a bad position to take. As you said, BlackRock is one of the incumbents. Uh, there is this um, narrative that say that basically... Uh, the incumbents are trying to take over crypto, take taking take over Bitcoin what? through this uh, regulated uh, exchange traded fund, and that simultaneously they are cracking down uh, through the SEC on Binance, Coinbase. Uh, so it's all some sort of a scheme made f by the incumbents to take over crypto. The question is, should we welcome the filing of BlackRock for a spot Bitcoin ETF, or should we be afraid of it? What blockchain technology does is it it basically disrupts financial services the way the internet disrupted media and commerce. Now we have a third ledger, an immutable, trustless, truth ledger that says 100, 100, 100. Everybody agrees it was 100. There's no fraud. There's no uh, malfeasance. And, and you don't have to trust me anymore. In fact, we don't even have to know each other. We can just transact peer-to-peer -peer globally, instantaneously. No more gold in a vault, no more money being printed. It's a pretty glorious future. But the incumbents are like, whoa, 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 well, wait a sec. I don't like that. I like my $7 trillion a year, my 6 to 8% of global GDP. That's good for me. So it's not surprising at all that the regulators would rig the system such that they don't approve the 
disruptors coming into the party to take some of that $7 trillion. Well, now BlackRock, which is part of the group, says, hey, we want to take the 1% fees every year, not you know DCG and the other disruptors. And now I think what happens is they say, okay. And so should we welcome them? Not really, right? But should we be happy that we get a better functioning system and ultimately we strip some of the costs out and so we win a little bit? Sure. And will people, look, the hardcore maxis, they'll hold their Bitcoin in self-storage, self-custody, put on a ledger, which we love because we own a piece of ledger, um, and everything's out. But for the average person who has never, like my dad, never going to hold his own keys. Just not going to do it. He's perfectly happy at Coinbase. He'd be perfectly happy to buy an ETF. We need these CFI, these centralized finance structures, as a bridge to the beautiful decentralized future. So that's a long-winded way of saying we shouldn't like celebrate them, but we should welcome them, and we should be happy that more participants will now enter the digital age. Thanks a lot, Mark, for this great conversation. As usual, it's a pleasure to have you on our show. And I look forward to talk to you again in a few months and see how your predictions will have played out. That sounds great. Enjoy the rest of your summer and uh, we'll see you in the fall.